We'll start with this incident at Kaibar. Remember, this is when Muhammad and his men ambushed the Jews in this community as they're going out to work their fields, carrying their shovels and their baskets and so forth. And uh, Muhammad shouted, Allahu Akbar, Kaibar is destroyed. Aisha later said of this incident that ever since we conquered Kaibar, we had all of the dates that we could eat. So rather than grow their own food, the Muslims decided to attack the Jews and take theirs. When Kaibar was conquered, a cooked sheep containing poison was given to Muhammad as a gift. Now let's think about this. You conquer a Jewish village named Kaibar. You take their food and uh, you levy a heavy tax onto that community. And then you get a gift of food from them. Does anything seem suspicious? Nope, not if you're Muhammad. The prophet in his ailment in which he died used to say, Oh Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I eat at Kaibar, and at this time I feel as if my aorta is being cut from that poison. I honestly believe if we were to administer a survey to every Muslim who has ever lived and ever will live, and that survey had one simple question on it, should you eat food given to you by a village that you have just ruthlessly conquered? I think there would only be one yes to that question. And that person would be Muhammad. Next. Some woman asked Muhammad, what is deficient in our intelligence and religion? He said, is not the evidence of two women equal to the witness of one man? And they said, yes. He said, this is the deficiency in her intelligence. So women, by the way, if you're having issues keeping up with the pace of this video because you're half as intelligent as a man, then you can go to Muhammad's gift to modern women on YouTube. And that's that little setting where you can change the playback speed to one half speed just for you women who have uh, half the intellect of a man. Let's look at another one. Muhammad said, isn't the witness of a woman equal to half that of a man? The women said, yes. He said, this is because of the deficiency of a woman's mind. So let's put these two things together. When asked, isn't the witness of a woman equal to half that of a man? Muhammad said, yes. This is because of the deficiency of a woman's mind. When asked, what is the proof that a woman is intellectually deficient? Muhammad replied, the witness of two women is equal to one man. So according to Muhammad, if you're a woman, your testimony is worth half that of a man because you're intellectually deficient. And the proof of your intellectual deficiency is that your testimony is worth half that of a man. So you can see the flow of Muhammad's argument. It's, it's curved, like a, it's round, like a circle. It's circular in nature, kind of like this illustration I prepared. Now hold on to that diagram because we're going to come back to it. But first, you know, just as a side note, the majority of the inhabitants of hell are women, according to Muhammad. And if you could convince women that the reason that the majority of the inhabitants of hell are women, if you could convince them that's due to their deficient intellect, it would be a really good way to extort some money from them because you could demand payment as a way to compensate for their lack of intellect. But who would do that? Muhammad. He passed by the women and said, Give alms as I have seen that the majority of the dwellers of hellfire are women. They are the most deficient in intellect. It's fascinating, right? You women are a bunch of dimwits, which is why you end up in hell. But if you give me some money, we'll smooth things over with the law. We'll make it okay. Funny how that works. Now we're going to take one more side road before we come back to our diagram with Muhammad's reasoning, which once again kind of resembles a, a circle. And that is how so many things in Islam can be considered a miracle. Let's take a look at one. So this question is about the prophet sucking on the tongue of a little boy. And of course, you have to read it in Arabic to get the true meaning. It's, it's not actually the prophet sucking on the tongue. It's the prophet sucking on the tongue of the little boy. And what do we have here? I mean, how, how do we explain this? You know, you can see these, these Muslims process. How do, how do we explain Muhammad sucking on this boy's tongue? Well, it turns out it's a miracle. It is a miracle of the prophet. And again, it is a miracle of the apostle of Allah. And just to make sure you get the message in capital letters, a miracle of the prophet. Now, by the way, while we're here, let's talk about this. A miracle of the prophet, pa I mean, look how many times this occurs just on this page. We can do a search. It occurs one, two, three, and up here somewhere, four. It occurs four times just on this page. Now, if you are a Muslim and you write pa after Muhammad, you are lazy and ignorant. Now, those aren't my words, those are the words of your scholars. I'll read to you from my own copy of the scared is sacred 
Islamic law, and I'll put it up on the screen for you so that you can read it with me. One should avoid writing it in two defective styles, one of which is deficient in form, i.e. alluding to the blessings by two letters or the like, as certain lazy, ignorant, or unlearned people do, writing p b h instead of Allah bless him and give him peace. And once again, I'm just quoting your scholars. Back to the topic of Muhammad's circular reasoning. Watch carefully and remember the Islamic propensity to find miracles in everything that Muhammad did. Watch closely. Muhammad actually invented recycling. <sighs> Camel urine. Let's move on to the next one. A group of Israelites was lost. No one knows what they did, but I did not see them, except they were cursed and changed into rats. If you put the milk of a she-camel in front of a rat, it will not drink it. But if the milk of a sheep is put in front of it, it will drink it. I told this to Cobb, who said, Several times, did you hear from the prophet? Let's formulate Muhammad's argument. Rats drink sheep milk and not camel milk. Jews drink sheep milk and not camel milk. Conclusion, a group of Israelites was changed into rats. Wow. Not only did Muhammad invent recycling, he also invented non sequiturs. So we've seen enough of Muhammad's logic, especially in this recent example, to get an idea for the way he thinks. And I think we've seen enough to formulate our own arguments using his logic. Allah's messenger said, The hour will not be established until you fight with the Jews in the stone behind which Jews hiding. Say, O Muslim, there is a Jew behind me, so kill him. Look how filthy, vile, and violent this hadith is. It must be weak, if only there's another one in Sahih al-Bukhari to confirm it. There is. Once again at the end times, the stones will cry out, saying, there's a Jew behind me, come kill him. But it would be much more reliable if this hadith was in Sahih Muslim as well. It is. You will fight against the Jews and you will kill them until even a stone would say, come here Muslim, there's a Jew, come kill him. Let's read another one just to make sure. The last hour would not come unless the Muslims fight the Jews. And there are those talking stones and trees once again. Come kill the Jews hiding behind me. And with that, we are ready to formulate our first premise. Premise number one, Muhammad envisioned a future with all Jews killed. Premise number two is a very well-known historical fact. We can just look at Wikipedia. The final solution was a Nazi plan for the genocide of the Jews. It was uh, the official code name for the murder of all Jews within reach which was not restricted to the European continent. Now we're ready to add our second premise to the first. Number one, Muhammad envisioned a future with all Jews killed. Number two, Hitler envisioned a future with all Jews killed. Now let's apply Muhammad's logic for our conclusion. Muhammad envisioned a future with all Jews killed. Hitler envisioned a future with all Jews killed. Conclusion, Muhammad was changed into Hitler. And this logic is every bit as valid as Muhammad's Jew camel milk rat argument. Let's do another one. Muhammad, of course, consummated his marriage with Aisha when she was nine. And, of course, she was carrying her dolls with her, young little girl that she was. Aisha was allowed to play with dolls because she was before the age of puberty. Sometimes Aisha used to play with dolls with her friends. And when Muhammad would come visit, they would leave. And then when Muhammad was finished, her friends would come back in. And, of course, later on in Aisha's life, she was still described as a little girl who had not yet reached the age of puberty. The best example for mankind also really liked his fair-skinned women. The prophet admired Um Ibrahim, who was fair-skinned and beautiful. He had intercourse with her by virtue of her being his property. Let's look for some modern parallels to see if Muhammad could have been changed into someone else. Here we have a nine-year-old girl being molested, but unfortunately this man is only 20 years old. Muhammad was in his 50s, so this isn't a very good match. Here we have a nine-year-old girl being molested and a 50-year-old man. Now that is a much closer parallel. But the only problem is, does anyone see the problem? Well, we all know that there was a fatwa issued. Anyone who says the prophet was black should be killed. The prophet was not black. So it's very simple according to this fatwa. To be deserving of death, all you need to do is say the magic phrase, Muhammad was black. Muhammad was black. Let's move on to some more modern parallels to see if Muhammad could have been changed into anyone else. Well, there's an example of sexual misconduct. There's another example, or here, or maybe this, and definitely this. I think we've accumulated enough evidence at this point to formulate another argument, yet again, in line with the logic of Muhammad. 
Muhammad sexually violated a young girl and treated women like property. Many Muslim migrants are sexually violating women of all ages all across Europe. Conclusion, Muhammad could have been changed into any one of these sexual predators. Notice our deductive arguments are every bit as valid as Muhammad's, and they contain a lot of explanatory power for things that we've been seeing in our modern world for the last several decades. Ah, the wisdom of Muhammad.